Hello, I'm Rita Panahi reporting for Sky News Australia Digital. Can we all remember a simpler time when Meghan Markle was just a briefcase holding model and wannabe actress on Deal or No Deal, who, unless you watch Suits, was relatively unknown? As we now know, that has all changed. There isn't a day that goes by without headline after headline on the Sussexes, latest antics. And who knows what could be next for the world's most painful couple. Sky News Australia presents Digital Originals, Lies, Hysteria and Gaslighting, The Meghan Story. Governor Meghan Markle, Senator Meghan Markle, or could it be, God forbid, President Meghan Markle? Make no mistake, there is a reason the Sussexes have ended up in California, the state where the untalented and well-connected can make their way into the Democrat Party looking for a political future. If reports are to be believed, Meghan could be looking at a future in politics. I don't know how that's going to work because I thought Harry and Meghan's <laughs> biggest gripe with the UK was this is, you know, the press is out to get us. We have an unfair press. You know, we have these hit pieces. They're always pulling out mean tweets. And when you run for office in the US, ask Nancy Pelosi, Michelle Obama, Hillary Clinton, even someone like Marjorie Taylor Greene, you've got to be the freaking Terminator. You've got to be able to take the hits and get back up every single time. You can't hop on the plane and run away to Vancouver to the mansion when you get some bad press, you know? So I don't know how they're going to do if they run for political office here in the States because I even think of someone like George Santos, who's humiliated on a daily basis, made fun of on SNL all the time. He still has to get up and show his face and smile. He can't run off and do books and documentaries and things like that. Talk about star power. This is a story that Meghan Markle had been uh, paying um, Michelle Obama's ex-press secretary for advice. And, it's, um, and it gives you some indication about whether she will have political ambitions herself. I mean, that's often been rumoured, whether she saw herself entering the political fray. Again, we talk about their two star power. Love them or loathe them. They are very, very popular. And, uh, and, and everybody talks about them. So... It's it, again, when you talk about Harry and Meghan, you talk about the fact that they're globally recognized, uh, the fact that they can do an awful lot in the charity sphere if we get across the noise that we've had over the last couple of years, especially. And, and does Meghan see herself um, entering US politics? I mean, it's a big, big question. Some people have said it's frankly ridiculous, but I, I wouldn't bet against her on this point. Do the American public want somebody's husband in the White House who openly admits to drug use, who openly wore a Nazi costume? And, and not only did he wear a Nazi costume, but he blames his brother and his wife for wearing the Nazi costume. Do they want somebody in the White House yeah. that can't keep a secret, that is that is proven to be so utterly disloyal? I think, you know, that scene you showed, that's actually my favorite scene from the South Park. It's hilarious, but it does give you... you you know, Harry should have never gone into details about his private parts, and he shouldn't have gone into details about Williams. Um, oh. It just shows you that this is a really immature couple, and I don't think in any way, shape, or form that the American public would allow her the opportunity to move into the White House. This is a woman who has built her whole brand on lies, hyperbole, and gaslighting. Some might say the perfect prerequisites for a politician. I would argue otherwise. In 2017, during Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's engagement interview on the BBC, the princess-to-be claimed to have not had much understanding of the royals. Because I'm from the States, you don't grow up with the same understanding of, of the royal family. And mm. so while I now understand very clearly there's a, a global interest there, I didn't know much about him. And so the only thing that I had asked her when she said she wanted to set us up was, I had one question. I said, well, is he nice? Because if he wasn't kind, it just didn't, it didn't seem like it would make sense. It didn't take long for these claims to be disputed. Meghan's maid of honour at her first wedding responded with this character assessment and fact check. All I can say now is that I think Meghan was calculated, very calculated, in the way she handled people and relationships. She is very strategic in the way she cultivates circles of friends. Once she decides you're not part of her life, she can be very cold. I know the royal family was something she found fascinating. She had one of Princess Diana's books, 
on her bookshelf. And even when she was with Trevor, she told me she wanted to go and stay in London for at least a month. I wasn't shocked or even surprised to hear about Prince Harry. I know she used to love The Princess Diaries, films about a commoner who becomes part of a royal family. She was very taken with that idea. Mm. A strong dispute of Meghan's claims from the woman that stood next to her during her first wedding. And the claims were even disputed from Meghan Markle herself, writing in her blog, The Tig, in 2014, little girls dream of being princesses. I, for one, was all about She-Ra, princess of power. For those of you unfamiliar with the 80s cartoon reference, She-Ra is the twin sister of He-Man and a sword-wielding royal rebel known for her strength. We're definitely not talking about Cinderella here. Grown women seem to retain this childhood fantasy. Just look at the pomp and circumstance surrounding the royal wedding and endless conversation about Princess Kate. Mm. That to me sounds like she was in fact familiar with the royals. For someone unfamiliar with the royals, the wedding was pomp and ceremony on steroids with added Hollywood A-list. The guest list included celebrities like George and Amal Clooney, who it was later reported didn't even know the happy couple. Sky News Australia host Piers Morgan also shared a similar experience with Meghan. Well, I, fo I love Suits, the, the show she was in, and I followed on Twitter four of the stars of Suits, including Megan, and she immediately direct messaged me. She slid into my DMs faster than the Greyhound. Do you have Greyhounds <laughs> in America? Yeah, they're good. And it was like, Piers, I'm such a big fan. I'm so excited you're following me and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, great, and I really think you're great. And we, we exchanged messages. We then started emailing each other. She then brought in uh, Rick Hoffman, who plays Lewis Litt in Suits. He came on my show here, Good Morning Britain. We sent Megan pictures. She went to Africa. She sent me pictures from Africa and emails. She started sending me early episodes of Suits. I was on the inside You're track. You're in. This is the inside. Yeah. Then she says, I'm coming to London to see my friend Serena play at Wimbledon, Serena Williams, and I'm going to have a couple of meetings, but I've got time. Do you want to meet up? I went, great, come to my local pub. The Handsome Scar cab? No, oh, it, was, yeah. it was the Scarsdale Tavern, actually, in Kensington. Lit ironically, a few hundred yards from Kensington Palace. And she turned up looking a million dollars. We had 90 minutes together. I had pints of foaming real ale, as you'd expect from a British man. And she had a couple of dirty martinis. Oh. And we talked about life and the universe and Donald Trump and, you know, everything, really. Her days as a deal or no deal suitcase girl. And I thought, what a delightful person. Nobody in the pub knew who she was. She just looked very glamorous, but no one knew who she was. And she left saying, I've really enjoyed it. It's going to meet up again. Thank you very much for your time. She tweeted... Uh, at the end of the week, great, or that day, I think, or the next day, th great to see my friends in London, including Piers Morgan. I was like, oh, great, you know, how nice. Last I ever heard from her. <laughs> she Bang. ghosted you. Ghosted, gone. Drafted you right. like a bad Did habit. Brutal ghosting of all time. <laughs> and then, of course, we've now seen dozens of other people say they too got ghosted. We all got frozen out. She had reached a loftier, a loftier place, yeah. and there was no room for people like us. The lies that were spewed during the now infamous 2021 Oprah Winfrey interview were a new low and led to the couple having to release numerous statements after the interview to set the story straight. No, you lied and got caught out again and again and again. Like this clangor of Meghan forgetting her own siblings. I mean, it's, this is a very different situation than my dad, right? When you talk about betrayal, betrayal comes from someone that you have a relationship with, right? I, I don't feel comfortable talking about people that I really don't know. But um, I grew up as an only child, which everyone who grew up around me knows. And I wished I had siblings. I would have loved to have had siblings. That's why I'm so excited to be pregnant, so that Archie has someone. This lie led to a legal case with her half-sister, Samantha Markle, with Meghan's legal representative offering a response. Meghan's response to that question that she grew up as an only child was obviously not meant to be a statement of objective fact, that she had no genetic siblings or half-siblings. Rather, it was a textbook example of a subjective statement about how a person feels about her childhood. 
This case has since been thrown out. One of the biggest lies in the Oprah interview that led to worldwide media storm was an allegation of racism. The Sussexes spoke of harrowing speculation of what colour skin the children may have. A relatively innocent thing. Most people wonder what their kids will look like. The great interviewer Oprah failed to notice the differing accounts from the pair. Megan claimed there were several conversations about Archie's skin colour while she was pregnant, while Harry said there was just one conversation before the marriage, long before the pregnancy. Get your story straight. How many people do we know within the royal family? How much, how many examples have we got of them being even the slightest bit racist? There's only one, and that is Harry himself, where he wore a swastika on his sleeve when he went to a fancy dress party and absolutely attacking a, um, a, commu a soldier when he was training who came from Pakistan. Now, if anybody needs to be called a racist or behaved like a racist, that is definitely Harry. I mean, it is outrageous they're getting it. The other thing about the... the um, racist thing is only that one member of the royal family said they wondered what color skin archie would have archie is now three and um that you know people might say what color hair is he having his father's ginger hair there's more interest in that than other people who've got dull brown hair like me and um it's it's just it's just terrible actually because um, uh, Megan told Oprah Winfrey that um, it, there was long, several conversations when Harry came later because Megan occupied it of course with 45 minutes and Harry came on the last bit he said oh no this was before we were married now have you ever heard of anybody saying before a couple are married what colour will your children's skin be they don't know if they're getting engaged if they're getting married they they don't know if they can have children i mean it's a nonsense isn't it? it's a non-starter because you may remember that infamous interview she gave with oprah winfrey in 2021 and at that time she was incredulous that her her son archie was not automatically a prince like prince william's children and she alleged at that time she gave the impression that this was due to her son being mixed race, which was an outrageous calumny, you know, against uh, the, the, the royal family. Because as we now know, far from being a racist snub, the palace was simply following strict protocol. And, you know, anybody with a smartphone and 10 minutes can go on Google and they could have found that out for themselves very easily. So why Megan had to belabor this point of race is beyond me, because it's, it's well established since 1917, King George V laid down that all of the, the male line grandchildren of the monarch become prince and princesses. But in terms of great grandchildren, and in 2021, Archie was a great grandchild, only the, uh, the uh, eldest son of the Prince of Wales's children mm. become prince and princesses. So it was only with the Queen's death and King Charles' accession that Archie and Lilibet became eligible for these titles. And this is simply that protocol playing, playing out. So whether it's you know, deliberately or through complete stupidity, Megan painted an entirely fictional picture around race. And I think that's quite despicable. And yet we've had no apology from the Sussexes again for allowing mm. the royal family's reputation to be besmirched. I don't think there will ever be an apology, Rafe, uh, from, from what we've seen. Most outrageously of all, Harry and Meghan allowed claims to swirl about racism in the royal family for almost two years. They made a six-hour documentary about it. They accepted a Human Rights Award last month for fighting structural racism in the royal family, all based on what they told Oprah Winfrey. But now Harry's decided that apparently that's not what they meant at all. In the Oprah interview, you accuse members of your family of racism. You don't even... You really well, of... the British press said that. Right. I... Did, did Meghan ever mention that they were racist? She said there were troubling comments about yeah, Archie's skin colour. There was concern color. about his skin colour. Right. Wouldn't you describe that as essentially racist? I wouldn't, not having lived within that family. The way the British press reacted to that was fairly typical. Neither of us believe that that comment or that experience or that opinion was based in racism. I would like to apologise on behalf of the British press, actually, because he is an unbelievable village idiot, and I think it's all our fault.
Honestly, it's not the fact that he was useless at school and got no qualifications, which is why he's doing all this stupid stuff. It's the British press's fault. We're responsible for everything, including his ginger hair. And I'd like to apologise for giving him ginger hair. It's awful. We should never have done it. But let me get this straight on a serious point. The racist British press blamed for six hours straight of that Netflix bilge for hounding Meghan out of our racist country, driven at the top by a racist royal family. Apparently, it's the press that's to blame for saying that Meghan Markle's claims of racism were claims of racism. Now, this had consequences, what they said to Oprah Winfrey. I was forced out of my last job presenting Good Morning Britain, a job I really enjoyed, because I said I didn't believe these claims without firm evidence. There wasn't any. And now we get told it wasn't racism. Exactly is what I suspected at the time. Do I get an apology? Does Sharon Osbourne, one of my guests tonight, does she get restored to her job at the CBS show, The Talk? Because she got fired for offering support on Twitter for my right to my opinion, because apparently I'd said racist things. It turned out those racist things were not believing Meghan Markle's racism claims. Now they say they didn't mean racism. So does Sharon get her job back? Will they give back that award that they got for their heroic battle against structural racism in the royal family? Now we know there was no racism, structural or otherwise. The fact checkers were also quick to shut down many of Meghan's other claims during the interview. She told Oprah they were actually married three days before their Windsor Castle ceremony, a claim disputed by the official who drew up the paperwork, and that led to the Sussexes themselves having to issue another statement admitting they had not been married three days before. She also claimed before the massive wedding that she was effectively under house arrest and that for a four-month period, she left the house only twice. False, false, false. Indeed, fact-checkers from multiple publications from the BBC to the Daily Mail have debunked many of the verifiable false claims made by Harry and Meghan. If the Oprah tell-all was supposed to pull at the world's heartstrings and boost sympathy for the former working royals, then it failed miserably. One of the more odd lies that came from Meghan was from a magazine interview with The Cut when she compared herself to Nelson Mandela. I just had Archie. It was such a cruel chapter. I was scared to go out. A cast member from South Africa pulled her aside. He looked at me and he's just like light. He said, I just need you to know when you married into this family, we rejoiced in the streets the same way we did when Mandela was freed from prison. Yes, the Duchess of Sussex actually claimed she was told by a male South African cast member at the premiere of The Lion King in 2019 that her marriage to Prince Harry sparked celebrations similar to those when the iconic leader was finally freed from jail. However, Dr John Caney, who played Rafiki and says he was the only male South African actor in the movie, was quick to hose down her claims. I have never met Meghan Markle. This seems like something of a faux pas by her. I have never met the Duchess at all. Mm. Oh dear, Meghan, what a tangled web we weave when we first practice to deceive. If you found this production informative, then please like, subscribe and share this video. We also want to hear your thoughts on the issue, so write us a comment down below before you click off this page. I'm Rita Panahi from Sky News Australia. Thank you for watching.